Ma- good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will start for this event today. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, as we are about to begin, I would like to seek your cooperation in completing this webinar. Kindly assure your microphone in Zoom is mute to avoid interruption. Yeah, thank you for Kin's cooperation and attention. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on the topic implementation of local culture in modern technology. And welcome to our special guest today and to the Honorable Dr. Joseph Tegu Santoso as a rector from Stecum University and also Mr. Zhu Zhenglo as a party committee member and vice president of Wuxi Vocational Institute of Commerce from China and Honorable Professor Elfa Saldana as the first principal for the Enology and Gastronomology Faculty from Autonomous University of Baja California from Mexico, and also Honorable Wang Hao PhD as a lecturer from Musi Vocational Institute of Commerce from China, and the Honorable Professor Meseret Wolfu as a College of Social Science and Heritage Management Department, and coordination of Alega Cultural Study Directorate of the Petabur University from Ethiopia. And the last Honorable Professor Bibi Adial Pianto as a lecturer from Graphic Design Department. Yeah, thank you for all being before here with us today. Also, thank you to our participants for attending this webinar. We hope you will learn a lot today. We have planned up for you to be practical engineers. Further for the Square of the Morning Agenda, we will open with Indonesian National Anthems and continue opening speech by our rector, Dr. Joseph Tegu Santoso. And after opening speech, we will continue with take a picture for documentation. And then after that, we will continue for presentation by our special guest today and continue with Q&A session and then it's a closing. Okay, I will start for this event today. First, we will opening by listening Indonesian national anthem. So, Miss Febri, the time is yours. Thank you. National Anthems for Miss Febri. And the next session, we will listen opening speech by our rector, Dr. Joseph Tegu Santoso. Yeah, the Honorable for Dr. Joseph Tegu Santoso. The time is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello? Terdengar? Yes, terdengar, Pak. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the honorable our speakers today, Professor Elfa Sal 
Saldana as Vice Principal of the Enology and Craftonomy Faculty from Autonomous University of Baja California, Mexico. And Wang Tao, PhD as lecturer of uh, Wuxi Vocational Institute of Commerce, China. And Mr. Worku, Mr. Mr. Worku as lecturer College of Social Science Heritage Management Department and Coordinator of Aleka uh, Kiprehana Cultural Study Rectorate Ethiopia and Mr. VP RT Alfianto MBT as lecturer of graphic design from Stecom University Indonesia and all of our beloved beloved and distinguished guests. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this event with the title Implementation of Local Culture in Model Technology is conducted by Stecom University and collaboration with Computer Graphic Department from University of Science and Computer Technology or Stecom University and Autonomous University of Baja California, Mexico Wuxi Vocational Institute of Commerce, China, and Debre Tabor International University, Ethiopia, Indonesian Smart Teacher Planner Association, or PTIC. It is a great pleasure and an honor for me to deliver this welcome remarks at the opening of this international webinar. May I first take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation, as well as extend welcome to uh, Mr. Chu Chang Long as the party committee member and vice president of Wuxi Vocational Institute of Commerce China and all the audiences and also all the speakers of today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, the topic of today's event is about how to implement local culture and model technology. The development of technology in Indonesia is currently at its peak. Many people focuses are finally solved by the development of existing technology, especially regarding the existence of a small cell phone that can be carried anywhere and can be used alone. Although sometimes technological de uh, development in Indonesia to this often refer to negative things, in fact, the existence of this technology can have a positive value of it can be used properly for everyone. <clears throat> One of the uses of the existence of technology and the internet in Indonesia, it is used in introducing local work or wisdom that develops in an area. Talk about culture. Indonesia is known throughout the world for its riches and cultural diversity. Every region in Indonesia certainly has local wisdom. Not only handmade works, such as batik or traditional clothes, but traditional food and houses are also part of local uh, wisdom left by our ancestors that must always be guarded and preserved so as not to be taken by other countries or even lost. Development, Development this local wisdom becomes a picture of the image of an area in the eyes of residents of other areas, become a feature or different title that not all regions have it. Ladies and gentlemen, in this globalization era, or you could say an era that is completely digital, of course, we cannot be separated from social media. Based on studies and research data collected by We Are Social in uh, 2019, social media users in Indonesia have reached 
150 million people. This means that about 57% uh, of the entire population of Indonesia is already using various social media, which is one for one example of the development of information and communication technology. However, Indonesian people are increasingly influenced by foreign culture through this development of increasingly sophisticated modern technology. With the rapid development of existing media, all information and culture from outside are perfectly absorbed without any filtering of uh, and cultural distinction. So that all tradition, they are considered ancient or outdated are starting to be forgotten. Therefore, we as, as users must be as wise as possible in using social media. We can use it as platform to preserve the culture in Indonesia. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, in the process of preserving culture so that it is maintained and not extinct, as the younger generation, of course, we must uh, participate in it. For example, we can promote culture by introducing uh, local culture through the use of social media, such as YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and others. Maybe in China, is a, is a, uh, they have they, uh, the China culture have their own uh, social media models. Uh, and the impact cause people in the world can know the culture that exists in Indonesia. Maybe we can do this by uploading for this kind of uh, local culture, so as traditional dance or so as tutorials that we can also show how the customers, uh, how the customs um, and accessories are used. In addition, we also uh, we, we can also upload photos of cultural activities that will later be seen by people and and other. <clears throat> Uh, become aware of our local cultures. It can be concluded that uh, technological de uh, development have a good and bad uh, influence on cultural development. Technology is not a barrier for us to enrich our culture, but technology becomes a good medium depending on the users. Do users use the technology for the positive things or do users use technology for negative things? All the influence of technology on cultural development is in the hand of the directory of the technology users. We cannot blame the technology because technology is medium that can be controlled by the users of the technology. Ladies and gentlemen, that's... Uh, uh, the only I can share to you uh, <clears throat> for more our discussion about this topic uh, will be presented by our great speakers today. I hope after paying attention to our explanation from our speakers, we can know implementation of the uh, local culture in model technology. Last but not least, I will say thank you for all international in affairs staff in conducting this special occasion. Thank you all and enjoy this webinar. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you for give uh, opening speech for Dr. Joseph. And for our audience, the next session, we will continue with a uh, presentation from our special guest today. And this session will be moderated by our partner, Mr. Adi Nugroho as a lecturer, Graphic Design Department from Stecom University. Yeah, for Mr. Adi, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Novita. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Hello uh, for everyone who began, uh, for who attends this uh, webinar. Uh, today we have a webinar about culture. We are talking about culture, and we have a for 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 nation that will talking about culture in and how it implement in the modern technology. 
First, I would like to say thanks for all the honorable speaker. First, Mr. El, eh, Professor Elva Sadiana and from the University of Baja California, Mexico, and Mr. Wang Tao, PhD from Boise Vocational Institute of Commerce, China, Mr. Meseret Borku from uh, College of Social Science Heritage Management Department and Coordinator of Aleka Gebrena Cultural Study Directorate, Ethiopia, and Mr. Hippi R.P. Alfianto uh, from Traffic Design, Stikon University. Okay, uh, let's start to the first presenter. First, I would like to read the the profile, the curriculum vitae from for, from the speaker. Uh, here is the the curriculum vitae of Mr. Elva uh, from Miss Elva Sadana Alvarez. Professor Elva Sadana Alvarez. She is a uh, has taken education the Bachelor of Gastronomy in Baja California State University, and then the Master in Food Service in Cornell University, USA. Okay, and she have a uh, lot of experience. Uh, first. Is, she has become a deputy director and teacher on Oneology and Gastronomy Faculty of University Autonoma di Baja, Mali, Baja California, teaching just like food service, operation management, and in the food service industry. Also, co owner and manager in Warchi Restaurant in 2016 and 2017. Become a supervisor in the Budikas de Santo Thomas at 2014 and 20 until 2016. And coordinator and, and teacher in Baha California State University School of Oneology and Gastronomy, as well as a consulting and, and catering in the regular restaurant from 2000. 2008 until 2012. Also, uh, have uh, experience as, at Expo and Server, Apple B at 2007 and 2008, until 2008, as teacher manager in ordering and system control. Also, have a business, uh, has experience as business English teacher. The Anglo Mexican Foundation at 2007 and 2000 until 2008. Okay, uh, this is the 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 resume or, or the curriculum vitae of means of Professor Elva Sadana Alvarez. Okay, uh, please welcome for Mr. Al uh, Sadana Alvarez. The time is yours. Thank you very much. I will be sharing now my screen. And so we can begin. Okay, let me just get rid of the button. Okay, I think it looks better this way. <laughs> so thank you very much for having me. Um, in this uh, couple of minutes, I will be talking to you about specifically Mexico in this in, uh, in this case, and specifically well about the technology, how we use the technology in the gastronomic tourism. As you may know, obviously, um, tourism is something really important for us, and especially talking about food. So I'm going to start off with a phrase that is very common in my country. And it's in Spanish, as you can see, it says, el amor entra por el estómago, which in meaning, in English, it, it translates to love enters through the stomach. 
So this is an old and popular saying that the elderly used to tell young women as an advice to win a man's heart. It may sound old fashioned, but it definitely reflects the importance of food in our Mexican culture. Normally all around the world, Mexico is well related to joy, adventure, color and flavor, especially flavor. So as you may know, Mexican cuisine is part of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization's list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Being the first cuisine in the world to receive such a distinction is quite an honor. So it's only natural that we're eager to share it with the world. And of course, with future generations from its roots to the hardest trends. In order to achieve that and hand in hand with the government, several actions have been carried out to attract tourism. In the gastronomic field, the proposal of attractions revolves around specific thematic areas. As you can see from the picture, we have uh, the, reach, the, the areas or the fields in the gastronomic that as they were established are the wine regions, the ethnic cuisine, traditional markets, corn gastronomy, tequila culture, seafood cuisine, ancestral Mayan gastronomy, mestizo cuisine, Mexican art cuisine, and contemporary Mexican cuisine. From the pictures, you can tell that, for example, on the top uh, right, we have a, a lot of culture of wine because obviously the Spanish uh, came to Mexico and they established in different places all around the country. So we have a very um, important influence from that. And as you can see, this is from a museum and we have it like with a lot of equipment that go really, really back. In the bottom, you can see a person, we call these people Jimador. And these people are the ones who are um, uh, basically in charge of taking care of the maguey, which is the plant of, that we use to make in the making of tequila. And um, also on this picture, you can see uh, the corn and some of its uses. Corn is something really important in our tradition, uh, in a traditional kitchen. And it has many uses. So actually in Spanish, the word corn is just one word. I mean, in English is just one word, but in Spanish we have for all the th different types and all the different parts of the corn cup, we call it different way. If it has grains, if it doesn't have grain, the grain itself and the different uses, that's something that is very rich in our culture. And it's one of the ingredients that we continue using and that obviously it has very different applications as you can see in this picture. These are just some of them. Um, over here, we can see some of our traditional markets. These kind of markets, you can see them more oftenly in the center and southern parts of our country. As you can see, they're very colorful. They are uh, full of people normally. Uh, a lot of food. You can also uh, eat in those markets. You can find uh, things for the kitchen. Uh, you can find um, anything that you need, even uh, piñatas, bags, and a lot of, a lot of things. And in the bottom, we have uh, some of our ancestral gastronomy or some of the equipment used and also some of the ingredients. So this is very rich and this is just like a little thing or a little taste of everything that we have to offer. And that obviously we love um, offering and sharing, and sharing with the world. With this set of objectives, all the states across the country are integrated and they have something interesting and unique to offer. So many culinary routes and guides are being mapped out, even across countries. Not, not there are only routes that are from a specific um, state, but across different states, uh, we have mapped out different culinary routes that help to the tourist, uh, to the tourist or to the visitor to know a little more about our, our culture or a specific ingredient or a specific dish. Um, this obviously takes it to a whole new level where we can find a same base dish prepared in a whole different way. For example, our famous mole. Uh, for those who do not know what I'm talking to, <laughs> mole is a sauce made with many ingredients, but it's prepared in different ways with different ingredients and even different colors depending on the region or even the family tradition. So as you can see in the pictures on the right, we have a map of our country, which is Mexico, and some different um, examples of the mole that they make. 
and the ingredients that they use. Uh, the main common factor is uh, the, the pepper, but they use different peppers, different seeds, and obviously different techniques. On the left, on the top, on this uh, picture, this is the poblano mole, which is the most representative from our culture, but uh, that doesn't leave behind all the rest of the kinds. As you can see in the bottom picture, we have powdered mole in different colors, as you can see, which is like the most representative um, picture of it. So um, the perfect way to shout or to tell the world about these incredible proposals were normally through TV commercial, web pages, social media, and the, favor and the favorites on planes and newsstands, magazines. The brand of Mexico Desconocido, which is the one that you have on your screen, is a very well-known company and has, the, and has had the vision to interest others in all the little corners of Mexico, even for locals. Some spaces that we don't even know that they exist and that thanks to this um, information, we get to it. So the vision of the company is so that it closely collaborates with the Tourism Secretary of Mexico and with their tourism departments on each state of the country. They issued several printed guides, guides uh, demonstrating the cultural and highlighting, of course, the gastronomic richness in each one of them. So they have uh, different uh, routes and different guides from regions, from specific uh, states, and also sharing with all uh, with all of these the information that is so uh, rich about all the ingredients that you that the region has to offer. So it it has different um, um, issues, and uh, also in the last one you have an example that is now even presenting awards. So they use in this case technology, which are um, online um, voting to name like the best routes or the best destinations or the best, um, I don't know, traveling uh, experiences that the public uh, votes for the, their favorites and they give some awards. But of course, we cannot stay at this point in the 21st century <laughs> with only printed uh, ish, uh, magazines. So they have naturally released an app so in alliance with Google, um, they released this app to learn or to let others know more about gastronomic destinations. And since it's powered up by Google and by Google Maps, you can learn about culinary proposals that are near you. And, and of course, well, you can get to your chosen destination, but you can also browse for local guides and for additional recommendations as well. So as you can see in the picture, this is an, an example of, of some of the um, efforts that Google have has made with, in alliance with some other other um, companies, and obviously, well, for Mexico in this case. Um, Netflix, um, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Netflix has also been a great ally and another platform to broadcast and speak up for the Mexican cuisine and culture. Tropicalized shows such as Heavenly Bites Mexico, Traco, Taco Chronicles, and Street Food Latin America, among others that include whole chapters all about Mexico's food, cooks, and chefs, have led to Mexicans' own pride of their culture, becoming world ambassadors. But it also arouses curiosity about, for outsiders, travelers, and foodies all over the world. So thanks to that, we also get a lot of travelers and a lot of people interested in knowing now more, not only about our food or trying new food, but also about the culture. Mexico also welcomes virtual and augmented reality. Uh, several attractions in Mexico City and the most famous Tulum Ruins virtual tours were especially important during the pandemic. Uh, fortunately, these efforts started before, so we already had some platforms to offer when the pandemic started. And well, this has obviously been um, a very interesting uh, moment. Um, people obviously dazzle towards the great show through the screen. And obviously they cannot wait to be seen in real life. So normally food, uh, the food that we taste during a trip is one of the most important experiences that we all always remember. And 
actually, when we talk about a trip, well, we always end up talking about the food and the culture involved. So it's something that as long as the rest of the attractions are obviously uh, well known, it always leads to somewhere they are going to eat. And obviously that's somewhere they are going to enjoy. And speaking of which, um, talking about some culture, Google Arts and Culture share with the world this uh, joyful space that you can see on your screens. It is full of history, culture, secret ingredients, and even the makers of such an art. This page is full of facts, different points of views, and the impact of biodiversity in a typical Mexican kitchen. So I'm going to give you a small tour around this page because it's very, it's very interesting. And I'm going to begin in the landing page, which is this one. And as you can see, it has all the colors that naturally distinguish us. And it has a lot of uh, hidden messages from the colors of the corn and obviously all the ingredients that can appear in the different illustrations. On the bottom, it has obviously the collaboration because uh, it has a lot of research to be done. This is our fabulous country uh, full of rich variety and a lot of different um, opportunities, ingredients. And as you, if you go down and down, it even has uh, like some quizzes or it makes you it gives you the information according to the type of people of the personality or the interests that you have. So for example, if you are more of a binge watcher, well, it gives you options of videos about Mexican food. If you're more of a people person, well, this, in this space, you will going to hear more about stories and more about the history of certain people. If you're more about the history, then in this, um, in this part, it's, it, Actually, it has like a, a similar information, but shown in a different way, depending of your, on your preferences. And well, it has even a tester if you uh, feel like you're a savvy in the, in the, in maybe in the Mexican culture or, or the food. And uh, this one is also a very interesting, um, way to go through it so it has this and you and it basically takes you from north to all over the country and shows us uh, the different uh, ingredients and the different traditions and techniques they have to offer so from the north the identity then we go to the coast and it gives you a lot of information and even from each one of them you can click and it takes you specifically to that place. So it gives you even more and more information. Um, I don't know if we are doing okay in time. I'm almost finished. So, well, uh, going back, basically this is a very important, is one of the most important uh, platforms that we have nowadays and that it, it helps us communicate a lot of things that we have to offer in so many parts of the country. And that thanks to the technology, obviously we have the opportunity to, to do it. Coming back to my presentation, I would like to thank obviously everyone and if there is uh, some time, I would just like to, to make um, a quick reflection about all of this, which undoubtedly, well, the use of technology brings us closer together and it makes it uh, seem as if everything is possible. Um, still, it's quite a topic when the culture and traditions go back for so many years and generations and communities try so hard to preserve those traditions. So it may sound like very, like it would create an impact against technology, but well, Mexico's culture is fortunate uh, in being able to adapt itself from its original ingredients with all the migra migrations over the years that we have had. But obviously uh, there's some, still some communities that feel uh, the struggle of uh, bringing tradition out of some families or communities specifically. So this globalized era um, and the use of technology could be an interesting subject to discuss, but Mexican um, Mexicans, uh, we are very creative. Uh, we're very creative and well, we'll definitely get the best of both worlds. So um, thank you uh, very much.
I just I had uh, another story, but I don't know if we are okay with the time. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you for the very uh, pleasing presentation. This this presentation <laughs> about food, of course, is make us a uh, little bit hungry. Hungry now. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a question. This is from Miss M J Stekom. Uh, is this a, is this a presentation of Mexican food made from vegetable only or made from meat as well? Okay, thank you. I guess it's about uh, the subject of food in the Mexican is most of vegetable or most of the food are meat. Okay, maybe you can explain about this question. About about the food that uh, we have that we have in Mexico about the ingredients. Yeah, I guess. I uh, think so. And, and we did. Okay, I understand that maybe it's, it's about that. So, um, Mexican uh, food is, it has a lot of, of meat and a lot of uh, vegetables because uh, the thing that is so uh, wonderful about us, I mean, not as a culture, I like to brag, but what is wonderful about it is the, um, the geographical location. So it makes us very rich in different parts uh, all, all across the country. So we have uh, seafood from the coasts, we have meat from the dry areas, uh, we have um, obviously a lot of, of, of fruit and a lot of vegetables from all the other areas. And also it has a, a quite um, uh, like part which it shares, let's say the um, uh, the weather with the Mediterranean. So some of the uh, of the food and all of the dishes that we share are very similar, but only in this uh, in this part or in this on this states specifically. I don't know if that solves a little bit the question. Okay, uh, there's uh, someone who writes in. Who is present? Uh, Miss Mavita, Miss Fabriana. Ada ada yang writes in. Miss Dida. Yeah. Okay. Um, Where is? Okay, please, Miss Dida. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, uh, Miss Elva. Nice to meet you. I'm Dida. So sorry, I can't uh, open my video because out of uh room. Yeah. Uh. Uh, I like uh, Mexico culture. Mexico has the potential to be technology pioneer, right? Uh, after America. And uh, Mexico can become a pioneer of innovation across Latin America and globe in such fields as artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. Um, Mexico well positioned to contribute, uh, contribute to emerging technology uh, such as electrical vehicles, the rollout of 4G or 5G telecom networks, smart green homes, and uh, the other technology fields. Okay, uh, my question is: uh, Could you uh, what is it, explain about? Um, Mexico culture related to the technology, special, especially electrical vehicles and uh, 5G telecom networks. I think uh, Indonesia is uh, maybe is uh, is what it is. Um, uh, is getting uh, is getting progress, right? But uh, Mexico uh, is uh, the pioneer of the technology yeah okay maybe could you explain it to me thank you miss Elfa. nice to see you see you thank you very much yes um well as you said it actually we are very fortunate to be so close to the united states with our which are basically leaders in all of the technology and all of, of everything that is going so quickly sometimes it, see, it seems that technology is going so fast specifically about all the um, about the different topics that you mentioned um well <laughs> it's been a long road uh definitely mexico is not uh in the first world countries but uh something that is very important in our culture and even in our day day to day is the creativity 
uh, of the Mexican people. So uh, being that said, most of the, or a lot of the technology and specifically, specifically the, max, the manufacturing of all of these, for example, the vehicles and all of those um, things, uh, we have them in our country. So uh, definitely it's obviously a, a great help being so, so um, close. Actually, myself, I am in Baja California right now. So basically, I'm very close to everything that has to do with Silicon Valley, California, and all of the great startups that happen in the United States. And that obviously, um, there's a lot of people that are over there and that are actually Mexican. So um, that is what I think helps us so much. And that is uh, something that continues being uh, something that we um, try to push and try to, uh, to continue uh, excelling in those kind of subjects. So basically all of, all of the things that, that you mentioned are um, directly come from, from that. And uh, oh, well, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Uh, okay, maybe in the questions also a little bit uh, out from the topic, I guess, because it's about electric engineering, electric car. Uh, yeah, uh, I actually it's not only electrical engineering, but uh, there are some technology uh, in Mexico, especially in the agricultural uh, technology yeah, or agricultural uh, fields. Yeah, but... Um, Yes, that's it. I think thank you, uh, Miss Alpha, for your explanation. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. I like uh, I like uh, what is it? Um, learning about culture, especially uh, Mexico or America. Yeah, so I uh, yeah just know a thing about uh, Mexico culture. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, there's another question. Uh, this is uh, about the question from Mr. Wahab. Uh, is gastronomy only focused on food or just like surf on how to make it? And also there's uh, another question from Ahmad. Aside of geographic location reasoning, it gives unique and diversity of cuisine. Is Religion rules affecting cuisine too. Okay, I guess this is maybe a uh, important question, especially in Indonesia. We are Muslim, most of us Muslim, so I guess tequila. We we can drink tequila. Is there any uh, limitation on your country? Okay, that's the question. Well, in, our, in my country, the only limitation is the underage people. So basically, if you're 18 um, or older, you can drink any alcoholic beverage. In my, in my country, not, I mean, we have like, as I was telling before, I'm very near to the United States and that's different over there. So it's very common that the, the United States um, teenagers come down when they're 18 because they know they are allowed here. <laughs> but over there, it's over 21. But over mm -hmm. here, um, actually, all of these about the beverages and all the, of the alcoholic beverages, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting topic because what we try to implement, and actually we're trying to do it even in early stages of, of the age of the people, um, is that they don't see it or that they don't associate always like, the, for example, the tequila or the wine specifically to the alcoholic beverage, but all the culture behind it like everything that is done to get to that product, it may be a different choice if you can taste it or not, or if you like it, or even if you don't like it. But to appreciate the whole work that is done from, uh, the, um, uh, from the agriculture and from all the tradition that it has to be done to take care even from the plants, from the vines or from the maguey in this case, that's what we like to share. And also all the sensory um, evaluation um, alongside with. So that's, I think, uh, what we try to reach even more or what, what we try to transmit even more than the consumption of it. 
Oke, okay. oke, okay, that's a very interesting topic. I guess, uh, I guess, uh, I'm sorry for an, another question because we have limit of time. We have a uh, four speaker. I guess, uh, yes, there's uh, some question too, but uh, we can we, we don't have time to discuss this. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we are really, really, really. Uh, uh happy for you to come because it's uh, i guess it's already very very late in the mexican okay what, what is the time now in the mexican it's almost midnight almost midnight okay thanks a lot for me for me uh, from me uh from me alvarez uh, i guess uh it's now we have to 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 change to the second speaker okay uh now the speaker is from indonesia from stikom semarang uh miss mr bp uh please welcome uh, please welcome, please make your presentation. Okay, Mr. Adi, thank you. Can you hear my voice clearly? Hello, one, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we can hear you. Lancar daya ya. Okay, I share my presentation. Can you see my PPT? Okay. So, okay. Uh, please share the 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 full the full screen. The full screen. Full. All right. The full screen. US. Okay. Wait a minute. Uh, like this. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. Full. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Adi, as a moderator in this event. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, my opportunity for me to deliver my material today. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vipiar Dialvianto, as a lecturer of Recom University. Uh, thank you uh, for the counselor of the Stockholm University, Dr. Jose Teku Stockholm, Teku Santoso Mkom, for giving. Okay, for our audience, our speaker, we hope you will stay with us until the speaker because we will take a picture for documentation. Yeah, thank you.
Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, let's uh, in travel format. Presentation, clearly. Yes. Okay. Uh, this presentation and uh, Indonesian culture for this webinar. I'm very happy to able present material about implementation of local culture in model technology. So this is uh, my title, uh, Fusion of ethnic and electronic music to interest millennial generation to know the country's cultural. This is Ampot Indonesia culture. Before we get into anything further, this is an important disclaimer. Indonesia is a singular term that name a particular nation there are at least 300 ethnic groups in Indonesia. It's with their own set of customs and distinctive cultural object. That doesn't mean there's aren't any still between one culture to the other. But when reading this phrase, keep in mind the diversity that's come with it. Often what considered as Indonesian culture is in fact an image a dominant one or reflect an amalgamation of certain uh, similar culture. So in Indonesia, uh, we have uh, religion come first. We have seven religion in Indonesia. When Indonesia, in Indonesia, Balinese priest and their offerings first thing in the morning or time, no matter what religion they uphold, Indonesians are generally very spiritual. They take their religious practice and that is reflect in daily ritual ceremonials, even the grandness of their place of what are six religions in Indonesia, Islam, Islam, Catholicism, Hinduism, and Confucianism. We have hundreds of traditional belief systems. Indonesia diversity extend to the variety of belief system as well. Many communities still live traditionally and still avoid the religion and practice of their ascentors as an unique to the locality, but to categorize many belief systems draw from animes, dynamis, and totemis. In some communities, those beliefs interact with tradition are influenced by another mainstream religion, resulting in merit of unique practice. I repeat again from hundreds of traditional belief systems. So Indonesia diversity extends to the variety of belief system as well. Many communities still live traditionally and still avoid the religion and practice of their ascetors. 
often unique to the locality, but to categories, many belief systems draw from animism, dynamism, and totemism. In some communities, those beliefs interact with tradition or influenced by another mainstream religion, resulting in a merit of unique practice. Indonesia are collective. Since its earliest history, Indonesians have always been communal. Farmers work together to cultivate that land and manage resources. Fillets keep close-knit communities and take care of each other. And cultural values push for a principle of collectivism. Even in modern settings like the office workplace and modern communities, you'll see the inclusiveness and friendliness of Indonesia. In Indonesia, every place has legend. It's a fascinating thing to learn the colloquial process that make mountains, seals, and rivers. But Indonesian go beyond tectonic plates and erosion to explain how natu uh, natural landmarks came to be in most places. You can talk to the locals and dig story of gods, spirits, royals, or hermit to contribute to the forming of a particular spot like natural features, a temple, or other cultural remnants. Indonesians love making and performing art. Indonesian rich cultures begged so many inspired uh, works of art, uh, painting, sculpture, music, dance, theater, and more. From the ancient times to contemporary era, Indonesian artists kept drawing inspiration from the archipelago's culture, values, and nature, ensuring the art scene stays alive and progressing. This is Indonesian traditional music. So we have uh, many traditional musical instruments, and we have various shapes and sounds. Music and an uh, inspirable part of people's lives, not only now, but since a long, uh, it's a long time, music has lived from time to time. It's increased since the first, also known as traditional music. Traditional music is uh, that has lived and become the culture of a particular area for thousands of years. In each region, the music has its own characteristic, whether it is uh, the shapes, how to play it and the sound it produces. Therefore, the unix of this traditional music is a wealth that should be preserved. If you want to learn more about the meaning of traditional music, there's an offer free. Traditional music, according to Tambalijo, 2017, is an art and culture that lives and develops in certain areas and has been passed down for a long time. This music has different characteristics in every corner of the country and region. Then, according to Purnomo, 
Traditional music is a uh, music that is born, grows, and developed throughout Indonesia and has been passed down from generation to generation and to this day. Because it is still maintained and certain out by the local community. Traditional music is actually music that is important to be preserved. Because the uh, central heritage that has been passed down to its creation, it's a testament to the wealth of art in the past. As for the understanding that has been mentioned above, it can be counted the traditional music is music that was born and developed in certain areas and continue to exist because it is preserved by local people who get the musical heritage. Traditional music function. Traditional music has characteristic that distinguish and region from another. Function one, traditional music serves as a means of entertainment for those who listen and enjoy it, as well as entertainment for players. Function two, as a community identity where the existence of traditional music is typical of an area so that it has an influence and in the formation of social groups and makes them as identities. Function three, as a community identity where the existence of traditional music is typical, typical of an area, so that it has uh, an influence on the formation of social group and makes them identities. Function four, as means of communication. Through traditional music handed down from the ancestor, it provides an opportunity for the community to be able to feel communication that is religious and belief between the communities and the ancestor or ancestral spirits, as well as communication between the players and the audience. So this is Indonesian traditional music instruments. First, we have gamelan Jawa Tengah or Central Java. Javanese gamelan has a slendro and pelok tone system. Slendro means five tones and pelok means seven tones. Second, we have uh, angklung. This musical instrument made of bamboo must be shaken to produce a tone. And third, we have sasando, a string instrument that is played by plucking with the fingers like guitar, but this is not the same because uh, this is produced from uh, another, uh, from plant. Okay? And guitar, uh, we have uh, about wood, yeah, make with wood, but this is not make with wood, but we have a same about guitar and sasando. Sasando uh, playing with fingers. Sasando is traditional music instrument from rote culture. And the last, we have Kendang Bali, a musical instrument that belongs to the percussion family. Planang uh, drums and waton drums have a different pattern. But if played together, they can create a balance in them. So, we want to learn about electronic music because uh, we can we we need to combine about electronic music and ethnic music from Indonesia. 
about electronic music. Electronic music is a style of music created with electronic device that can be added with electronic music software. And we have software DAW. We need software DAW to play this electronic music. Software is an application where electronic music can be combined and harmonious according to what we want. The software can also tell the device, the product that sound, what pitch, chord, and it's an our song. What to play and when to play. And this is example, the away, software the away. FL Studio, Studio One, Cubist, and Ableton Live. Electronic musical instrument. The guitar instrument uh, and a circuit based music technology. In general, it can be distinguished between sounds produced using electronic means electronic music and those produced using only electronics. Electronic instrument, certain mechanical elements such as strings, hammer, etc., and electronic elements. Electronic music generate. First, future bus. Future bus is a derivative of the trap generate the difference. Different is that in the drop section, <clears throat> future bus includes various types of scenes, unlike trap, what focus on bass and and lead only. Artists playing the genre include Substract, is Sun Hollow, Flow, and Marshmallow. Second, Breakbeat, a collection of subgenre of uh, electronic music characters by the use of a four per drum pattern that is not strict as opposite to state beat of house trance music. That rhythm may be based on the use of interactive synchronization with the lively beat with prominent track, the original African music. Third, dubstep, a genre of electronic dance music organization from South London, England, and overall sound that has been described as a production with great bass line and reverberant drum pattern, cut samples and occasional vocals. For we have house music. Early house music was characterized by recreative for one for beats, uh, rhythm generally provided by drum machine, hi-hat cymbal accompanies and synthetized bassline. Well, house music is shown to have some characteristics similar to disco music, it was processed and influenced by it. And the last we have a genre about electronic music, it's a trance music, a type of uh, electronic dance music that uh, developed in the late uh, 1918 in the United Kingdom and further developed in the early nine, uh, 1990. In Germany, before spreading throughout Europe as an offshoot of the more melodious techno and house music. So, uh, this is ethnic fusion and electronic music. <clears throat> the combination of ethnic and electronic music brings to new chapter the world of music in Indonesia. One of the goals of this work is uh, to revive the love of Indonesian people for traditional musical instrument and also, of course, to return to remembering folk songs. This combination of music as, uh, is very unique, seeing the tone composition of traditional music instrument, which is not see complex complex and tend to be limited by electronic music when it's wider in terms of melody and harmony. The melodies and 
and harmonies produced by traditional musical instruments, also vary harmonies in electronic music. Application of ethnic music in the electronic music. We can using melodic instrument such as like a saron uh, from Gamela or Suling from Java to replace or as a second layer of melody of electronic music. Second, we can change chords in electronic music progression. We can include ethnic harmony musical instrument such as like angklung or sasandu. And third, then for rhythmic musical instrument, in electronic music, we can include drums, kolintang, saluang as music rhythm or as ornament. And thus, in terms of mixing traditional musical instrument have a dominant high frequency, for that we need to adjust the echoing so that the thickness of its musical instrument is balanced. So uh, this is example fusion, ethnic and EDM work. Share my videos. Rimbang is a subdistrict which is also the capital of Rimbang Regency, Central Java, Indonesia. Rimbang has cultural diversity, especially Javanese and Chinese cultures. All respect each other and live in harmony.
and the last video. Okay, thank you. That's my presentation. Okay, uh, give thank back to Mr. Adi. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rivi. That's a very interesting presentation. Is about uh, using uh, traditional music into and combine into uh, modern technology. Uh, I guess there's a lot of question. Uh, first, there's a question from Miss Kaila. Uh, what is the function of traditional instrument? The function of traditional musical instrument in other than entertainment. The function of traditional musical instrument in Indonesia in Indonesia other than entertainment. How do you combine audio and visual and electronic et ethnic fusion? Okay, maybe you can answer. Okay. Question. Okay. Uh, traditional music in Indonesia have many function. Uh, not just about entertain, but we have uh, many traditional uh, tradition tradition in Indonesia. And first, as a means of person closer, which means traditional music, it's a bridge for the preservation of the cultural richness of a particular region. It's also serves the maintenance to the stability and continuity of and function to uh, as a community identity, where the existence of traditional music is typical of an area 
so that it has an influence of the formation of source of as identities. And three, music provides harmony with the norms prevailing in the community according to the local culture. Four, uh, music becomes the accompanied people physical activities such as a traditional dance instrument, gymnastic dance, and so on. And five, music function as a symbol offering, which means that music is a symbol of the existence of community groups in addition. This music can also be used as a benchmark for how the culture of society has developed. And the last function about uh, traditional music as a means to communicate. Yeah. Through a traditional music handed down from the essentors, it provides an opportunity for the community to, uh, to be able of to feel communication that is religious and belief between our sense of spirit. That's a function of traditional music in Indonesia. And the second question, how, how I combine audio and visual and electronic and ethnic fashion, fusion? I think uh, audio and visual are interrelated. Every time I I also make a video. The music that I make, I like, which is then added the story. The why. The way I come uh, when I first read the way I come out you and visual is that I first read the storyline of the work. The storyline is the basic for me to make every step in the video. I also wrote the storyline based on the music I had made. It is um, the sound of the piano, example. The sound of piano first, and then maybe someone can play piano. Or for example, the melodic sounds of the violin is heard with the strands of a flute which we can describe with a situation of someone on the beach enjoying the sea breeze. That's all described and hear that the same time. Thank you. Okay, um, there's a question for Mr. Wahab. Indonesian musician or traditional musician cannot live by music. Are you agree with that statement? And how to solve this problem? Okay, this is the, okay, the common answer you. for artists. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a problem. Uh, the one uh, problem from Indonesia. Uh, we we scared about uh, job in music. Uh, you, you can, why you, you, you scared to be a musician? Uh, why we scared uh, we can live with uh, music? For me, now I live with music. I live with music, I create music, and I teach music, and I have uh, uh, I have uh, I have money from music. 
So uh, how I solve this problem? How I I uh, lead uh, my college to don't worry about your uh, choice. If you want to be a musician, you can be the musician because in the in Indonesia we have we have too many uh, platform like YouTube, TikTok, uh, Instagram. You can create. You can create content, music content like me, and you you have ads like that. It's the simple example for me. And maybe you want to make a lot of money. You can uh, present yourself, present yourself, and you can uh, playing music in cafe, in hotels, in uh, any regular event. So for me, I am not agree about that because we can live uh, anything we want. Thank you. Okay, uh, there's another question. What kind event that accept this kind of music? What kind of event? What event? Okay. Event yang event that can accept this kind of music. Ah, what kind of event? Event about uh, too many events uh, for me, and you can play in the music. But uh, if you want to interest people, you need to combine something on, or you like uh, give different about music not just like music for now pop rock or maybe dance you can combine every music and you make different your music and you present your music in every platform and every event so i i uh, i tell you about that is anything even uh maybe in your cafe and in your hotel and in festival music and every event you can you can present your music okay uh, i guess the question from mr hamida is uh is almost the same with, with the other question uh, i guess uh, i skip to mr andy the question from mr andy how to add the sound of traditional music like tendang so that can be combined with other tools like in digital music just like EDM. EDM. How to add yeah, sound of traditional music? Yeah, that's a music very band. good. Yeah, that's a very good question. So this is uh, I place in my PPT. So I want to share my PPT. How uh, I use and combine about EDM music and ethnic music. So, uh, in Indonesia and in traditional music in Indonesia, we have uh, many instruments, but uh, traditional music in Indonesia it's very different with the electronic music yeah. music uh, traditional music indonesia it's too little little is about melodies little about harmonies so this is how i i combine edm music and ethnic music first if you have a melodies in uh, uh, example about uh, how about uh, what am I uh, future bus uh, we have uh, melodies in future bus electronic dance music <coughs> for me it's a uh, simple i use saron saron is the most one uh, from Gamelan Jawa. So you can see my PPT. This is picture. This is 
This is saron. Saron is a melodic instrument. So if I want to give melody in my music, I can replace with the saron from uh, gamelan from Central Java. Yeah. And we we uh, if we want to change chords in electronic music progression, we can include ethnic harmonic musical instrument. Example, angklung like that uh, like videos I share. That's a angklung. That's a harmonic uh, music uh, ethnic from Indonesia. So, if we want to use rhythm like a drum, uh, we can. We have to place like kolintang, saluang, or gendang. Yeah. Gendang is a uh, uh, rhythmic music from Indonesia. From uh, Indonesia, that's a uh, traditional music from Indonesia. And uh, uh, the last, how I use and combine this music. In terms of mixing traditional musical instrument have a dominant high frequency. So if you if uh, you a music producer, if you can uh, know about this. We need to mixing uh, traditional music and electronic music because that's a different sound and different frequency. We need to mix it and we need to replace frequency with EQing in mixing and mastering. So that's how I application of ethnic music and electronic music and that's I combine, uh, that's uh, how I combine the electronic music and ethnic music. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for a uh, very clear explanation. I guess if somebody want to know more about the music, how to fuse music, traditional music with with uh, modern technology, maybe you can contact Mr. BP. Uh, maybe you can type your email in the chat room, maybe Mr. BP, so somebody can contact you uh, if there if they have uh, another uh, question. Okay, uh, thank you for Mr. BP. I guess now it's time for uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Meseret Borku, uh, Mr. Meseret Borku, is it? Uh, can you uh, listen? Can you uh, listen to us? Is there any problem on the network? Hello, Mr. Terlempar, Borku. Terlempar dari Zoom, Pak. Oh, I see. Terlempar dari Zoom. Mm, okay, I guess there is some technical problem on Mr. Meseret Borku. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, uh, this, there's a technical problem on the third, on the third speaker. I guess uh, we have to wait for the fourth speaker. Okay, uh, I will check the fourth speaker, is it ready or not? Yeah, good morning, Miss Cynthia.
Yang ditunggu sebentar untuk audiens ini masih saya hubungin untuk speaker dari Ethiopia nya. Terima kasih. Ya mungkin Pak Nuk mau menambahkan tentang kebudayaan Indonesia lainnya. Boleh sambil menunggu narasumber berikutnya. <laughs> Oke, okay, uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, Mr. Ripi, do you have Mr. Ripi? Is, is he still okay? Is he still on? Yes. Okay, can yes. you maybe yes. for yes. for uh, uh, to wait uh, wait for the Chinese to be ready? We have okay. a uh, 15 time 15 minute. Maybe you can show how to make how, how to uh, do sampling in the in the traditional music, or maybe you can show us how to uh, queuing the music. And you said that uh, you said uh, what is how to to balance the frequency between between uh, traditional music and electronic music. Yes, uh, Mr. Adi. Uh, we have uh, example um, Saron from Gamelan. Uh, sorry, uh, Saron Gamelan from Central Java. Saron uh, mix uh, with with besi uh, besi Iron. Iron. Yeah. Iron. Yeah. So. That's a very high frequency, high okay. frequency, even yeah. we, that's iron. So in mixing and in uh, produce music, in mixing process, yeah. we need to give low that frequency. Yeah, that's lower low, um, the frequency. We give a low frequency. Yeah, no, lower the lower frequency. The frequency yeah, yeah, that's yeah. We need the lower. Uh, we need to make lower frequency with uh, saron. Traditional uh, give high uh, frequency, maybe about electronic music. Example, uh, synthesizer or bass line. So. We have, we can make a uh, uh, what I balance yeah, oh, I for uh, saron and synthesizer. Mm. That's a um, I process that's music. We process in EQing. Okay, and uh, what's the maybe do you use uh, just like computer equalizer or use uh, an uh, analog equalizer? Just like uh, just like. Many musician using a uh, panel panel using a uh, uh, solid electronic music, or maybe you just use uh, computer music only. So for now, I just use uh, uh, computer only. Okay, computer but, only. Uh, still... Actually, we yeah. need to combine. We need to combine hmm. for analog and. I know just. Uh, use computer and maybe uh, you can uh, you can say oh uh, in the in the video uh, I have a lot of interest with your video uh, there is a lot of instrument uh, I, I like instrument music too but I can play yes I cannot I play but I like the music and I I see you were using a pad uh, what is called uh, what is the name on the 64 pet the... permisi oh, yeah, Pak Nuk okay. narasumbernya sudah masuk oke okay, oke okay. okay. thank you thank you uh, thank you thank you Mr. Vivi for the time uh, I guess it's time for Mr. Mesret Foku from uh, uh, he's a lecturer from social science heritage management department and coordinator of Alika Kebrehana Cultural Studi 
Directorate Ethiopia. Okay, uh, please welcome for your presentation, Mr. Mesret Morku. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Mesret. Uh, uh, please share my uh, PowerPoint. Uh, my title is uh, Survey of Tangible Cultural Heritage in Ethiopia. Just a moment, please. I will help for your PPT. Because already I share my PPT for you. So Survey of uh, Tangible Cultural Heritage in Ethiopia okay. uh, is my, my title. Uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to define the uh, uh, what does it mean cultural heritage itself, particularly cultural heritage. Yes, this is my PPT. So, according to UNESCO definition, cultural heritage as The property which on religious or secular ground is specifically designed by each state as a being of importance for archaeology, prehistory, history, uh, literature, art, or science, um, more or less related with these heritage resources are non renewable resources. They are tangible or intangible objects of human endeavor that have survived um, for a long period of time, which indicates evidence of the past human activity. Uh, generally, the definition uh, may be defined in UNESCO or according to Ethiopian, particularly authority of research uh, and uh, lit, um, particularly uh, number on 209 or 2000 define cultural heritage as any tangible or intangible uh, products of creative, creativity and lover of man in the prehistory and history time that describe and witness to the evolution of nature and which has a major value in its scientific, historical, cultural, artistic, and handicraft. Uh, generally, uh, uh, my uh, focus in tangible uh, cultural heritage, but as a beginning, I wanted to uh, specify the uh, difference between intangible cultural heritage and tangible cultural heritage. Uh, intangible cultural heritage, more or less, as you know, Uh, related with this. Tangible cultural heritage means cultural heritage that can be seen and felt and includes immovable or movable historical or, or man-made uh, heritages. Generally, uh, in this chart shows heritage classification. Uh, and as a natural uh, cultural heritages, again, divide into two, uh, tangible and intangible. Uh, natural heritages also uh, divide into two, flora and uh, fauna. Uh, tangible cultural heritages, again, uh, divide into two, movable and immovable. So my focus in uh, will be on intangible cultural heritage, particularly, uh, those heritages of Ethiopia uh, um, may be registered in uh, UNESCO. Uh, world heritage, that means my focus in tangible uh, cultural heritages um, registered in UNESCO. Generally, uh, Ethiopia is the leading in Africa by inscribed world heritages in UNESCO, about 17. That means one seven. Uh, UNESCO World Heritage is already Ethiopia have. Uh, 
within this, uh, uh, one I can raise some in a mountain national park as a natural uh, heritage, but is not a cultural uh, heritage. Generally, Ethiopian uh, heritage is maybe cultural or natural. It refers the top of the ridge. Uh, we can move from the top of Raj Mount, Samin Mountains, that about 4,620 meters. That means the third peak in Africa and the deepest point that is Denakal uh, Depression at about 120 meters below sea level. Uh, one of the lowest dry land points on Earth. Uh, this heritage is a part of Ethiopia. Uh, generally, uh, particularly in Ethiopia, uh, since July 13, 2060, Ethiopia changed its former tourism uh, motto. Ethiopia, uh, formerly uh, known by its motto, 13 months of sunshine. So the current motto express Ethiopia as a country endowed with uh, marvelous cultural, natural, and man-made historical uh, happening. That means Ethiopia, the land of uh, origins. Uh, what, uh, what Uh, different uh, both natural and cultural heritages or, uh, known or originated in Ethiopia. Within that, I can raise uh, coffee, uh, the birthplace of particularly coffee Arabica in Ethiopia. The origin of uh, uh, Blue Nile is Ethiopia. Uh, we can raise uh, here uh, because why Ethiopia uh, known by this, uh, particularly as a motto or used um, uh, the origin, um, this uh, land of origins, different uh, cultural and natural heritages also origi originated in Ethiopia. Generally, the selection of or the criteria of world heritage uh, sites, particularly according to UNESCO 1972 uh, convention, world heritage sites uh, should be or would be selected externally exceptional cultural and natural properties nominated uh, voluntarily by uh, Center of Nations, which have been approved for uh, inclusion of its list by World Heritage uh, Committee. Four basic steps of uh, selection of uh, selection and nomination of cultural heritage as a world heritage. Particularly, I can raise here two, uh, the four one. One, making an inventory work on that uh, heritage, maybe natural or cultural, selecting a property from the list and the place into a nominal uh, file. Uh, the third one, evaluating the nomination of file. Uh, uh, the fourth one, uh, particularly uh, World Heritage uh, um, Senator or uh, Committee may be determined whether uh, or not to be inscribed as a World Heritage. Um, so Ethiopian heritages, uh, both natural and cultural heritages, particularly my title is in uh, cultural, even within that tangible uh, heritages, by passing this selecting criteria, also registered in UNESCO. Uh, let us move uh, the location of Ethiopian world heritage sites and current conditions of these heritages, particularly as a first, I can uh, raise uh, Aksum. It uh, described as a world heritage in 1980. Uh, Aksum, uh, it refers the name of the town Aksum plus the name of the place Aksum, the name of an obelisk, the culture itself Aksumite. Within this massive ruins dating from uh, between the first uh, century AD and 13th century AD, the Aksum monolithic uh, obelisk is uh, also inscribed as a world heritage, a, a tangible heritage in 1980. Again, still royal tombs within Aksum, also ruins of ancient castles and 
many other archaeological findings are all the symbol of glorious Aksumite civilizations or Ethiopia. As you know, the name Ethiopia interchangeably used in ancient time, Abyssinia or Ethiopia, but Ethiopia uh, preferred by Ethiopians, but the Arabs and sometimes the Europeans also called it the name Ethiopia replacing Abyssinia. Uh, one point I, I wanted to remind here, the name Ethiopia, um, uh, particularly not only the name, the territory uh, of Ethiopia sometimes become sharing, uh, sometimes become enlarged according to uh, the uh, strengthness and the weakness of uh, Ethiopian uh, leaders. Uh, maybe uh, it included an ancient time up to uh, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, part including Yemen and to the Saudi Arabia, as possible as South part of Egypt, even uh, the uh, top of uh, horn, uh, the tip of Horn of uh, Africa, uh, today Somalia. But nowadays, it includes one of the proper Horn of African countries. Let us move uh, at Aksum. It is outstanding universal value, symbolize uh, uh, the crossroad of three co continents, particularly Aksumite civilization, Aksum intangible heritage it refers. The African, uh, the Greco Roman uh, civilizations, and Arabia, also a part of this. The fallen obelisk, which a height of three, uh, 33 meters, carved out of a single stone, uh, the, the, uh, it refers the longest one uh, among the three. 24 meters high obelisk is still standing on it, uh, particularly, uh, as you know, during the time of Italian invasion of Ethiopia, in partic from 1936 up to 1941, Especially in 1937, uh, um, it moved to uh, Rome, that's uh, untouchable Ethiopian heritage, but re it uh, uh, re returned back into Aksum in 2005. And this figure, if you are uh, the obelisk of Aksum, is a felon plus the standing one. When I move uh, this uh, another um, uh, world heritage, particularly cultural heritage, horror city or juggle, it inscribed as a world heritage in 2006. Uh, the world built during the time of Emir Nur, even uh, Mujahid, the successor of uh, Ahmed Ibn Ibrahim Al Ghazi, also known as in Ethiopia, commonly uh, Ahmed Grad. Harar, it's said to be uh, the fourth, the 40th holiest city of Islam within 82 mosques and uh, 102 uh, this, um, uh, uh, The host can uh, please help uh, move um, the PowerPoint into um, slide 17 uh, because um, I can't manage the PowerPoint here. So uh, please move to uh, uh, PowerPoint, particularly slide 17, slide 17. Excuse me, move to slide 17, move it, move it, go on, go. Yes, move. Yes, Harar, this one. Good, thank you very much. The host also helped uh, by moving, uh, adjust the PowerPoint. Harar city, the, the obelisk or Harar Jagol, um, one of the world heritage, uh, intangible cultural uh, heritage site in Ethiopia, seems to be uh, uh, this one. Uh, let us move another uh, cultural heritage, but, but this one, um, natural cultural heritage, console cultural landscape, landscape uh, but not only simply uh, the mixture of natural and cultural uh, heritages, the landscape uh, demonstrates the shared value and social cohesion, uh, one. Uh, in engineering knowledge of its communities, stone stills uh, within this in the town express a complex system of making the passing of generation of leaders. Wooden um, um, 
uh, and uh, anthropomorphic statue that uh, simply known as uh, Waka. Uh, please move to uh, um, slide uh, one nine. Uh, this one it refers uh, the, uh, the mixture of natural uh, heritage and cultural heritage. Uh, as you see in uh, land, um, um, the slide one nine. It's uh, also registered in UNESCO, one of the known uh, cultural heritage of Ethiopia, intangible cultural heritage. Another, the uh, castle of Gondor or Fasil Gebi in America or in Ethiopia, uh, commonly known as, it registered as UNESCO site in 1980. Um, Emperor Fasilides built uh, the first uh, palace in uh, 1632. Uh, his successors built their castle within the royal enclosure. As a result, uh, in uh, 1980, registered as one of uh, tangible cultural heritage of Ethiopia among the 17th um, UNESCO registered cultural heritage, uh, uh, the host moved to slide one, uh, slide 20, uh, maybe the, to see the, the figure of the castle of uh, Gondor. Uh, the castle uh, of uh, successive, uh, it refers to the successive emperors who ruled the country from Gondor are surrounded by uh, around 900 meters long wall. Um, the, not only uh, the emperor, the first, the so-called the first or the founder of Gondor, uh, Fasilides, rather the next successors also uh, built their own castle in Gondor. As a result, this intangible heritage, because of its beauty, um, uh, human creative activity, and um, uh, registered as a UNESCO world site, the figure also seems to be likewise, that, likewise this. Another uh, um, uh, tangible cultural heritage register within UNESCO, the Rock Hill Church of Lalibala, registered in 1978. The site contains uh, about 11 uh, medieval uh, monolithic uh, cave churches. They are two main groups of the church particularly within the exception of Beta Georgis, uh, to the north of the river uh, Jordan, or in Ethiopia, Jordanos. It include, uh, the site include Beta Medanalem, the house of the savior of the world, Beta Mariam, the house of Mary, uh, Beta Maskel, the house of cross, Beta Denagel, or the house of Virgin, uh, Mary, Beta Golgotha, uh, and, and Beta Michael, the house of Golgotha and Michael. Um, uh, another part in the southern part, uh, to uh, south of the river Jordan, that means Beta Amanuel, uh, Beta Kindus Mercarios, Beta Abalivanos, uh, Beta Gabriel uh, and Rafael, Beta Lehem also, a part of Lalivella um, um, uh, Monotos or Monolithic 11 rock home churches um, uh, inscribed by or made by the emperor, the king, the Zen time, Lalivella, uh, the house of Holy Bread or Bethlehem in this part. The 11 churches, uh, Beta Georgis, uh, among the 11, particularly Beta Georgis, is isolated from the others already I mentioned on the two group but connected by a system of uh, trench. Uh, Beta Medanialem, which uh, with it is five, uh, this is believed to be the largest uh, uh, monolithic church within the Lalivella 11 churches. This figure indicates this, um, the cross-sectional Beta uh, uh, Georgis. Another Tia stone, uh, um, uh, it registered in UNESCO in 1980. The site contains about 36 um, monuments, including uh, 32 carved steel uh, covered within a symbol, most of which are difficult to describe. You, you can uh, see here uh, the figure. 
uh, and uh, not only lower La Omo uh, Valley, also a part of natural and uh, uh, cultural landscape. Another we can see lower Ash, particularly uh, Lucy. Uh, it's co considered to be the origin of um, the origin of um, the human being in Africa or Ethiopia. Uh, but uh, let, let, let's move uh, to uh, um, another the five world heritage, particularly books. Uh, we, you can see here, Mazmuro um, David uh, or Saltram David of the 16th century, uh, painting uh, and the writing, particularly in Ethiopia, also known as um, this. Uh, uh, particularly uh, Amharic or uh, the origin, uh, the original part, you can see this one, one of the UNESCO registered, the first gospel Bible New Testament that uh, already written, uh, considered to be written in 14th century. Another uh, UNESCO registered, uh, in considered to be intangible cultural heritage with the manuscript uh, book of Enoch. Um, particularly uh, the book uh, we wrote in 15th century, um, another um, homily of the passion of our Lord and Savior for the Passion Week, with, um, also with the 15th century book of Ethiopia registered with UNESCO with its uh, beauty painting original in Ethiopia uh, and uh, others also a part of cultural heritage. Another St. Paul's uh, epistle, the 15th century. In general, um, uh, the heritage is Ethiopia, not only limited in Ethiopia, rather the heritage is also um, um, Ethiopian heritage also located in abroad. Uh, why? Museums, it is common for to find ancient Ethiopian manuscripts, religious objects and instruments, archaeological remains and uh, the like. Why the Ethiopian uh, tangible heritages, uh, movable heritages, also we uh, today found in, in different parts of the, the world and um, uh, museums. The fact strengthens this event, part, uh, James Bruce managed to study this before he came to Ethiopia uh, during the 17th century, because Ethiopian heritage is also moving abroad, particularly manuscripts. Another, the Ethiopian uh, ma uh, manuscripts also moved uh, to Europe uh, and other uh, Western countries, not only all over the world. The two major incidents um, uh, also may be responsible for this one. One, uh, the looting of Ethiopian heritage oh. as a result of the British expedition of 1868 at Magdala. Another, the Italian invasion of Ethiopia from uh, particularly from 1936 to 1941, four, five, five uh, years during that, Ethiopian heritage is also stolen and forced to move into different countries of the world, particularly Europe. Another heritage uh, is tangible. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Messenger Walko. Uh, sorry, uh, because we have limit time and maybe because uh, there is uh, some your technical problem, uh, we have to uh, to limit the, your presentation. Uh, I'm, so, I'm really sorry because we have uh, there's uh, another speaker too in the in this presentation. Uh, maybe uh, you can answer the question uh, about. Uh, but it's the same, I guess, in, in your country and in Indonesia. Uh, but but uh, how to make people, this, there's a question from Mr. Wahab. Uh, we have a Penisi cultural intangible heritage. Uh, but people, society, uh, doesn't know how to explain uh, about the intangible heritage. So how your country uh, explain to the 
people to, to your people about the intangible heritage of your country. Okay, uh, that's the question. Uh, how intangible? How because intangible is only can feel. You can see the 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 the, the heritage of intangible intangible asset. You can only you can only feel. And how UNESCO can close or take this trophy? What we can do? Okay. Sir, um, please repeat your questions because it is um, a scratch your your sound. Please excuse me. Please repeat your question. Okay, uh, I will read again. Uh, our Philip uh, seven years ago, our Philip got Finnish cultural intangible heritage from UNESCO. But we have problem how to explain the society about this. Uh, so our country get intangible heritage from UNESCO, but our society cannot understand about this uh, and how your country explain about intangible, uh, intangible heritage on your country to your people. Good. Uh, generally, to announce um, uh, this uh, cultural, intangible cultural heritage, not only for Ethiopia, for all over the world, including uh, Southeast Asian countries, including okay. Indonesia, yeah. uh, China, mm -hmm. or Mexico, all over yeah. all over the world, uh, by collaborating with your university and our colleague by using the the first one um, by preparing. Uh, a visiting, preparing a cultural exchange, visiting particularly university to university a linkage first as a host. Um, and by using modern technology, uh, because your university is a technological university, so our university, Debratabor University, uh, by, by using this means, different technology, we can share or announce our intangible uh, cultural heritage. Uh, not only uh, um, inscribed or registered in UNESCO, but also the others one, because a lot of uh, heritages, uh, particularly tangible heritages also exist, not only, uh, only all over the Ethiopia, even in, uh, the place uh, Devratabor University. Um, by using different modern technology, plus by preparing, uh, visiting university to university, uh, by forming or preparing university to university linkage and other means, uh, we can share or announce these heritages to uh, all over the world, including your university. Okay, uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, I'm sorry that we have to cut your presentation because uh, the limit of time, because we still have another uh, speaker. Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Mesut Borku. I uh, hope we can meet again in the next, uh, in the next event. Okay, uh, I guess it's time for the for presenter, but before we have for presenter, we have an opening speech from Ms. Long. Okay. Uh, excuse me because uh, unfortunately because uh, our our rector uh, suddenly have uh, uh, a guest uh, as. Uh, I have a guest, so uh, they can do uh, opening speech. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, we are uh, welcoming for the opening speech from Mr. Su Xiang Long. Uh, Mr. Su Xiang Long is a vice president of. Uxi Vocational Institute of Commerce China, 
and the party committee member of China. Okay. 好，那下面有请无锡商院副校长朱章龙先生致辞。尊敬的桑托索校长、拿督肖敬平、白尼斯理事长、各位师生，大家下午好。Dear Dr. Joseph Tengu Sasanto and Dear Dr. Xiao Chenping and Miss Nisi Bai, dear teachers and students, good afternoon to you. Very happy to meet you all in person. For this, I am the director of the Wuxi Engineering and Technology School, and I would like to thank the students who participated in this event. The University of San Paolo Computer Science University students are extremely warm welcome. 对马来西亚国际文化交流中心长期以来的信任与支持表示诚挚的感谢。And it's such a pleasure to meet all of you online. And on behalf of our Wuxi Vocational Institute of Commerce, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you from University's Science and Technology Computer Stackcom in Indonesia. And who are participating in this training, and to express our sincere gratitude to the International Cultural Communication Centre Malaysia for its long-standing trust and support. China and Indonesia are the two most close neighbours. The history of the two countries is long and rich. In recent years, through the Wuxi Vocational Institute, we have grown further and further. Two countries have formed. 全面战略伙伴关系，努力构建全方位对话合作机制，经贸、文化和教育等各领域的交流合作不断深化。此次主题培训得以顺利接洽举办，也是根源于两国教育文化交流的持续发展。China and Indonesia are close neighbors across the sea and have a long history of exchanges. And in recent years, as the Belt and Road Initiative continues to advance, the two countries have established a comprehensive strategic partnership and are working towards building an all-rounded dialogue and a cooperation mechanism in order to further deepen our exchanges and cooperation in various fields such as trade. Culture and education. So this training also rooted in the continued development of educational and cultural exchanges between the two nations. Wuxi Engineering Institution originated in 1965. Located in 学校积极响应“一带一路”倡议，具有丰富的国际化办学和教学经验，连续三次获评全国高职院校，国际影响力五十强。Our institute was founded in 1969 and is located on the shores of Taihu Lake, a beautiful scenery. We have been actively responding to the Belt and Road Initiative. And have rich experience in international education and teaching, and we have also been awarded as the top fifty of international influences for three consecutive times. 二零一八年，我校与柬埔寨西哈努克港特区联合创办的西哈努克港工商学院获准成立办学，成为中国首个高职院校。在海外成立的校企合作股份制应用科技本科大学，目前开设企业管理、物流管理、信息技术三个专业，招收三届本科学历生，开发输出六项专业标准和一百三十七项课程标准，并获柬埔寨认可，选派教师赴柬埔寨开展汉语及职业技能培训。共计八万人次，培养了一大批适应当地经济、文化和社会发展需要的
掌握国际通用技术技能的应用型人才。In 2018, the Chinook Field Institute of Business and Technology, jointly established by our institute and Cambodia's Chinook Field Special Economic Zone, and it was approved to operate and becoming the first university and enterprise joint venture undergraduate university. Of applied technology established overseas by a higher education institute in China. At present, it offers three majors of business in management, in logistic management, and information technology, and also has enrolled three intakes of undergraduate degree students, developed and exported six professional programs, and 137 curriculums. And which are recognized by the government of Cambodia, and we have also sent teachers to Cambodia to conduct Chinese language and vocational skills training for a total of eighty thousand trainees, and cultivating a large number of technical talents with international general、uh, technical skills to meet the needs of the local economic, cultural, and social development. Currently, Xinhua Nongkegan Gongshan Institute. 已逐步实现了学历教育、职业培训、科技服务、人文交流四大职能，成为推动中检产能合作、职业教育合作及文化合作的先进高效的人力资源开发引擎。At present, this institute has gradually achieved the full functions in academic education, in vocational training, in scientific and technological services, and humanistic exchanges, and it is becoming an advanced and efficient human resources development engine to promote the Sino-Cambodian cooperation in production capabilities,、uh, vocational education, and cultural cooperation. This training, we are offering online lectures, lectures. 学习、研讨、交流等方式，分享旅游和茶文化领域的相关内容，为无锡商业职业技术学院与印尼高校师生搭建共同探讨、互相交流的平台。相信双方会在培训交流中碰撞出思维火花，共同学习，共同进步。So in this training, we will. Share with you the topics on tourism as well as in tea culture through online sharing. So this is this is is to build a platform for teachers and students from us and Indonesia universities to further discuss and explore with each other. And we believe that both sides' effort will provoke more ideas, further learnings, and progress together. 最后。预祝本次线上培训交流活动取得圆满成功。欢迎印尼的朋友们，今后有机会来无锡商业职业技术学院访问交流。祝大家工作顺利，身体健康。谢谢大家。Finally, I wish this online training and exchanges event a great success, and we would like to welcome friends from all over the world to visit our institute in the future. And I would like to wish all of you success and good health. Thank you. Sorry, Pak, mic-nya. Ah,、uh, okay. Ah,、uh, thanks a lot for Honorable Mr. Resus Yang Long. And as a university, we also need a lot of collaboration with other university. And as same ASEAN, it's very important to have collaboration with China because China is an ASEAN country that bigger, is so big, as、uh, as same as modern with Europe in education and technology. So I wish we can continue in further collaboration with your university.、Uh, Thank you for、uh, provide us the training. Okay,、uh, I guess before we make,、uh, before we、uh, do another presentation, we can start the photo session first. Give me.
Feby, please prepare the photo session, Miss Feby. Mbak Feby, photo session. Oh, wait, Pak. Okay. For everyone, for every audience, please turn on the camera. Untuk semua audiens, tolong dinyalakan kameranya. Kita akan mengadakan sesi foto. For all the audience, please turn on the camera for photo session. Okay, I'm start from one, two, three. Okay. One again. One, two, three. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I guess the photo session is finished. Uh, I guess it's time for me to to make a uh, to introduce the speaker. Okay, uh, now for the speaker is Mr. Bang Chao. Mr. Bang Chao, PhD or Dr. Wang Chao. Uh, he is the associate professor and research researcher in overseas country, deputy director of academic affairs office and school enterprise cooperation office of Wuxi Vocational Institute of Commerce. Member of Academic Committee in, of the University and Leader of Tourist Management for Undergraduate. Uh, Mr. Wang Sao received a 2017 National Outstanding International Student Award uh, in the doctorate for by China Scholarship Council to that level training target of uh, 333 high level talent training project in Jiangsu province. Uh, he is also the head of digital culture and tourism and smart tourism big data innovation of UCI Center. He is also member of Northeast Asian Cultural Society a member of Young Geographer Committee of the Asian Geographical Association, or AGA, and a member of Cultural Geographic Committee of the Chinese Geographical Society. He is also visiting lecturer at Busan Dukyong University, a visiting professor at Southwest University for Nationality, and Master Supervision at Fujian Normal University. His research area are human geography, cultural anthropology, regional economic and social cultural special relation, and tourism and cultural industry development. Okay, uh, I guess this is the the profile of Mr. Uh, Wang Tao. And please uh, start the presentation. The time is yours. 好，下面的时间交给王涛博士进行课题分享。好，那个王博士，您的麦克风是不是？大家好，我在美丽的中国向大家致以最美好的问候。Hello, everyone. Ah,、uh, my sincere greeting from China to you. 我今天的演讲主题是数字文旅、文化与科技双重赋能。So the topic that I would like to share with you it is revolving around the topic of digital tourism. Specifically, we are talking about the double empowerment through culture and technology. 数字文旅就是数字经济与文化旅游产业的融合创新发展
So when we are talking about digital tourism, we are talking about the integration uh, of uh, innovative development of digital economies and the cultural tourism industry. It is a future so this is a, both a proposition of the times and also a call for innovation. And it is also a strategic idea for high quality development. And when we talk about digital culture and tourism, it has its nature in directional, in global, and it is trendy, it's trendy and is leading and also cutting edge. 跟数字文旅相关的关联认知范畴有很多，在中国呢，主要有四个方面的认知范畴。首先是关于元宇宙，也就是文旅产业如何拥抱元宇宙的问题。So when we want to approach the topic on digital cultural tourism, we need to touch about its related cognitive domains. So here are the four domains that I would like to elaborate on. So the first one, we would like to answer the question about how can the cultural tourism industry embrace the metaverse? So the focus here, it is touching on a metaverse. The second question and the second question will be asking what are the areas of the applications in digital and informational scenarios we are looking at exploring a immerse, uh, immersive experience of applications. Disangwentina是关于乡村正兴的问题,中国有广大的乡村,这几年呢,乡村发展,乡村正兴,红红火火,那么在中国未来的乡村建设中, and the third question, it is key to answer about how to create a future village smart scenes in the construction of the future village. And as we know in China, the country is putting a lot of focus in empowering and promoting the development in village areas. So we are talking about digital rural tourism development. The四个问题呢，是智慧景区的问题。那么在中国的，包括东南亚的很多地方的传统景区，如文化类的、古镇类的，他们如何活化和利用，如何呢去带来这个游客的引流，怎么做？是智慧景区的问题。and also the fourth question we would like to ask, how to revitalize the use of traditional scenic sports? For example, both in China and in ASEAN country, we will need to look into the development and revitalization of cultural and ancient scenic sports and how to attract customers and tourists to visit them. So we are looking at smart scenic sports developments. In China, 数字文旅不是零到一，是一到一百的问题。So 是一到一百的问题。So when we talk about digital tourism in China's perspective, we are not telling a story about from zero to one. It is more about a story of of from one to one hundred. 不是从无到有，而是如何做得更好。不是要不要做，在中国是。so what does it mean? It means that we are not doing something from nothing to something, but we are trying to answer the question of how to do it better. So this is not an issue of whether to do it or not, but how to do it. Chungo 
数字文旅在其中的带动作用。So when we are developing digital tourism,、uh, we must understand that no one size fits all.、Uh, so no applications are the same. But it is very crucial to highlight the local characteristics and ensure we are using practical implications to drive the desired effects in tourism. And it is not a Chinese online company. 或者是一些优势的头部企业、科技公司在关注，或者可以做，而是呢，体现在中国各个行业、各个领域，它的应用性、普适性和价值的认同性。当然，其中也包括文化旅游和文化创意领域。And Uh, who need to concern about this question? So this is not the business by only the internet companies or、uh, for big enterprises or tech companies, but it is a concern for all industries. So we are looking about how do we ensure the applicabilities, the universalities, and also the values will be recognized in all industry chains throughout various sectors. 在中国呢，有两个概念啊，一个叫文旅融合，一个叫一体两翼。文旅融合呢是文化和旅游的融合，而一体两翼呢，它是这个一体两翼的发展思路和理念呢，可以说是原来的文旅融合概念的一个升级啦。它是文化旅游的一种真融合、深融合、广融合，是文旅融合的一种发展进阶模式。So we are also having this talk to a、uh, two concept about the integration of culture and tourism, and we are also applying the theological model of one body, two wings into uh, this uh, development. So the so-called one body, two wings development idea or concept are、uh, actually will be an embodiment and the requirement of the. True integration, deep integration, and wide integration with both culture and tourism. So this is a advanced mode of the integration of the culture and tourism together. Here, the one body refers to tourism. Two wings refers to culture and technology. So we used to emphasize more on culture, but now it is technology. 它是赋予文化以活力和动力的，赋予文化以可持续的一种发展力的，所以科技是越来越受到重视啊。那科技与文化的关系是共生、共享、共建的关系，科技和文化是共同促进中国旅游的发展，促进社会福祉，促进人民、城市建设和居民的幸福感、获得感的提升的。So when we break down the idea of one body, two wings. So the one body here actually referring to tourism, while two wings are talking about culture and technology. So in the past we used to focus a lot about culture in tourism, but nowadays technology is also essential because it is a key element to give culture the vitality, the empowerment, and the sustainable future. So technologies and cultures. They are、uh, an integrated body. They are symbolic, and they have to share and build together in order to promote the tourism development, as well as contributing to better social well-being, and also to help people's、uh, city buildings and also the residents to gain a sense of well-being and、uh, happiness. Uh, in China, we are doing a activity. 一个工作叫无限定空间，这个无限定空间呢，指的就是啊，文化进景区，景区成为了一个无限定的空间。但是现在呢，我们要打造新无限定空间。这个新无限定空间呢，指的就是啊，科技也要进旅游。也就是说啊，那科技是一种文化，叫科技文化，叫科技文化新空间的理念。如下面两张图，尤其是右下方的这张图，就是科技文化新空间的无限定空间图
For the tourism industry in China, in recent years, we are putting more and more emphasis in the concept of infinite space. So it is about enabling uh, scenery sites with technology. So more and more, we are welcoming more uh, scenic spots or tourism attraction sites with a better enhancement of technology and culture. And these are the two photos uh, that are representing this kind of ideas and also the application of it. In China, 比如说第一个这是大唐不夜城在这个平台上呢就不管身在何处都可以在大唐不夜城啊游览娱乐也就通过直播的方式带游客足不出户的云游周边的商超博物馆。And let me share with you some of the applied cases or uh, actual projects here. So the first one here I would like to introduce to you is the integration of various business models and the digital innovations in the scenic area. So the case or the project here is, uh, is called Da Tang, a sleepless city project. So this project is creating a historical and cultural meta universe digital cultural wow. tourism projects. Uh, we call it the Da Tang project, like we mentioned. So they created the world's first meta universe project based on the historical and cultural background of the Tang dynasty in the year of Kai Yuan. So it is a tool or a medium uh, to the digital virtual world. So no matter where you are, you can visit and be entertained in the Datang's sipless city here virtually. So during the daytime, this Datang city is actually a real tourist attraction site and a space for leisure and shopping. But at night, so with the enablement of technology and also the sound and light technology, so it then transformed into a time and space tunnel. So creating immersive experience for visitors uh, in the Tang Dynasty. So the city will also take the visitors to all kinds of uh, settings like supermarkets and also museums through the light broadcast.这个品牌啊布局的一个招商的业态让游客乘坐时空旅行穿越这个时空啊融入角色忘却自我那体验一种三奔地裂沧海桑田斗转星移古今文明的宏伟和震撼非常刺激也非常惊险也成为很多啊中国的旅游目的地旅游景区的一个
and also combined with the refined content production. So it is able to bring to the audience with real physical, tactile, uh, olfactory, auditory and visual immersive full sensory simulations and experience and allowing the audience to travel through time and space uh, by the time travel machine or train. And they are allowing the visitors or participants to integrate into their unique personas and allowing them to forget about themselves and fully enjoying the experience of the virtual shocks, surprise, excitements from the landscape, from the sea, the star, the ancient and the modern civilization. So this is becoming a great hit in China and a new trend for cultural travel experience. Oh,下面关于这就是数字技术和特定空间载体的结合问题啊,在无锡呢,有两个公园,就是七惠公园和机场公园啊。那么我们通过这个时空旅行的VR智能啊,推开门之后啊,进去就可以看到啊,这个公
uh, on the picture on the right is actually an assignment, a project by one of my students. So this is actually a, a, a applicable project that we give it to the student as, exi uh, as assignment to try to apply uh, the technology into turning a map into a 3D uh, format. Uh, so uh, this is an example of a game in China. So we are also uh, turning uh, games into a 3D stereoscopic, uh, giving it a 3D stereoscopic experience with a game. Uh, uh, so through video games, we are trying to deliver a vivid and immersive experience for the player um, to experience uh, scenes and uh, places with a more natural experience, giving them more intimacies, more interactive functions in order to participate. And the three pictures that we are showing here, they're actually a hub or a tent that we built to allow the users to experience a virtual tour. So in this tent, the city that the virtual tour are bringing about is actually uh, picturing the city scenes in the city of Wuxi, which is the city that I'm living in and also where our university, where our institute are located at. So um, through this experimental hub, um, the visitors will be able to gain a vivid uh, virtual uh, touring experience by the lake uh, of Taihu. And also in the season of spring, where you can get to see the best scenes of cherry uh, blossom. So this is also a scenario that I would like to share with friends overseas. 下一页还有第四个方面是叫大地理范畴内的实践 and number four, also um, in the city of Zhejiang, we are also having project to promote the construction of the Commonwealth uh, demonstration area and for uh, developing uh, the countryside and also the village area in order to create a future countryside smart uh, cities or smart areas. And case number five is that we are also creating new era of immersive real-time experience. For example, in the activities of uh, performing arts in exhibitions and also uh, in sports such as taekwondo, uh, skiing, and so on. 第六个方面呢，是像河南卫视举办过元宵奇妙游啊，这个就是传统景区文旅小镇的应用，就是这个元宵奇妙游啊，是一个电视台啊，河南卫视。它通过在文化古镇或者临时搭建的传统文化设施场景中来活化和利用这些传统场景，并且呢，与新媒体平台呀、融媒体的手段啊，这个。
影视节目借体，或者是互联网企业，比如说天猫啊，对吧？来进行一个跨界融合的创新，来复兴赋能这个传统景区或者是文旅小镇。And also, case number six. Actually, it is used by the TV stations. Like for example,、mm -hmm. uh, for Henan's TV station, they have created this project called the Lantern Wonder Tour. So they are actually trying to revitalize the use of culture and the ancient town. Or temporary、uh, traditional cultural facility scenes with the technology, and to integrate with innovative technology and new media's,、uh, they delivered、uh, scenarios such as、uh, films and television programs, and also、uh, other internet experience for the users and、uh, internet users. 第七个方面是整体的特定空间区域的互联网化和数字化。And then case number seven, we are also looking into the direction of internetization and also digitalization of the overall specific spatial areas. 比如说是一个中国的某一个城市，某一个整座城市 ，whole city. 比如说，嗯。So for example, this kind of uh uh spatial integration can apply to another city area or particular city. 后面我们还会举例子。Uh, we may be able to touch on it later on in the later slides. 接下来我们要思考一些问题了。十个问题：第一，技术的参与和利用；第二，资源整合的这个资源价值的整合和挖掘问题；第三，整体空间布局的考虑；第四，功能定位的把握；第五，具体旅游业态的选择；第六，空间载体的选择。第七，招商引资工作；第八，前期的准备、试点和推进工作的安排；第九，是产品体系，比如说一到两个特色网红产品的这个产品体系的打造和营销矩阵的谋划；第十，就是关于时间问题。So here are some of the issues or questions that we need to plan out or to resolve, uh, for policymakers or the stakeholders. Who are trying to implement the idea of digital tourism in their own area or in their own cities? So these are the ten questions that I would like to、uh, highlight. So the question is about the participation and the use of technologies, and then the second question is on the integration and the excavation of resources values, and the third is on the consideration of the overall spatial layout, and then number four is the grasp of the functional positioning of your brand. Uh, or your、uh, attraction site, and number five is the selection of a specific tourism patterns, and number six, it is looking at the selection of spatial carriers,、uh, such as the ancient towns, the villages, or your neighborhoods, or your cultural and creative parks,、uh, and so on. And number seven, it is the work of attracting investments and fundings, and number eight, it is about the arrangement and and also the pre preparations. The piloting projects and also the promotion and the marketing works, and number nine, it is the creation of the product system. Like for example, having at least one or two viral products online,、uh, to boost the awareness, and then the planning of the marketing matrix. And number ten, the final one,、uh, it is the issue concerning the time. Okay, 那么关于研究方面，在中国呢。呃，这方面的研究啊，主要是这几个方面啊，一个是数字文旅，一个是智慧旅游，一个是数字文创产业啊，这理论。另外呢，在中国面向西部地区啊，开展了数字乡村建设和脱贫攻坚工作。那么实行啊，这个全面乡村振兴的乡村旅游计划。在中国有个中山大学啊，那么他们呢形成了一个二者科计划。那么在中国还有一个福建师范大学。那么形成了个叫“先原理计划”啊模式示范。And I would like to also briefly share a bit about the research direction that are currently related to the area of digital tourism, that are becoming a key focus in the research institutes or universities in China. So these are some of the research directions. So China's、uh, domestic and foreign university are、uh, building research platforms over the years. 
and they have continued to carry out and apply economics and scientific research and innovation in digital cultural tourism, smart tourism, and digital cultural and creative industry. And they also carry out digital rural constructions and poverty elevation projects for the Western ethnic areas in China. And they are also carrying out the rural tourism programs for the comprehensive revitalization of the countryside. Uh, so for example, in the University of uh, Sun Yat-sen in China, they have developed a project uh, called A uh, Ashika project. And also in the Fujian Normal University, they are running a project called uh, the Xian Yuan Li project, which is uh, uh, echoing with the model that we have just mentioned. 左边这张图是 first workshop of Asia Young Geographers 在这个会议上我们做的这个开会研究右边这张图也是我们一次会议上专门的一次研究会议啊。And uh, we also conducted webinars and online conferences um, to make progress into the research direction. So what you are seeing here are some of the screenshots of our online webinars that we have posted in the past. 呃，在下面一张图呢，左下方是这个我们和啊这个吉隆坡啊上海吉隆坡的一次国际会议。And we are also extending our discussion and academic uh, research overseas. So, for example, the photo on the left here, it is a, a research symposium uh, collaborating between the two city, uh, between Shanghai and Kuala Lumpur. 呃，现在我们看一看最重要的是实践领域。呃，实践领域中啊，呃，在中国啊，呃，刚才讲的这个例例一些例子啊，现在就在中国这个实践领域啊，就有很多这个开发的平台、构建产品以及推动成果转化方
then from the application itself, you will be able to get a full array, a full collection of information uh, of this scenery sport. 下一页我们的研究机构里啊，有一个研究机构叫数字文旅与智慧旅游大数据创新无锡中心。这个研究机构呢，最主要的工作工作就是将我们的这个创新啊，创新工作紧密的对接行业、企业和产业。那么来这个
呃，有一个概念叫具身体验，刚才提到的啊，什么是具身体验呢？就是一种全身心的各种感官的听觉、嗅觉、味觉、触觉啊，各种感官的一种沉浸式的体验。这里体验很重要啊，叫全身心的体验，这个概念叫具身体验。And a very important concept we would like to reiterate here. It is called the embodied experience. So this referring to getting an immersive experience from all senses, from seeing, feeling, uh, touching, uh, smelling, all sort of senses, so as to fulfill the individual personalized needs and uh, needs in uh, getting a cultural tourism experience. 所以在上面几个因素的影响下啊，中国就出现了智能云台山、唐宫夜宴、苏星游、深入姑苏平江路、五 G 大运河、数字故宫等等一批智慧景区和数字文旅的产品。So in response to such kind of、uh, market demands and consumer needs, then in China several companies and、uh, Organizations they have rolled out projects, uh, like uh the intelligent uh Yuntai Mountain and the Tang Palace Night Banquet and the Suxing Tour and also the Sound into Gusu as well as well as Pingjiang Road, Five G Grand Canal and Digital Forbidden City, uh all sort of projects. So these projects are the representation of intelligent scenic spots. And also digital cultural tourism products. 最后我们要说的是，旅游业它既是文化属性，也有呢这个经济属性啊。旅游业属于文化经济。那么我们可以可以很很肯定的说，中国数字经济的发展，数字文旅的发展，将会推动中国旅游业的成功和变革，也将推动中国经济文化和社会发展和进步。So when we come back to tourism, it is very essential to note. That it has its cultural attributes and also with economic attributes. So tourism, it is a form of cultural economy, and the development of China's digital cultural tourism will promote the reconstruction and the change of China's tourism industry, and will also promote the development and the progress of China's economy and culture and society. 后面我们最后就来给大家展示一下刚才提到的这几个产品中非常具有特色的、非常有意思的两个产品，一个是深入姑苏平江路，一个是数字故宫。And since we have mentioned some of the digital tourism products, uh, that has been rolled out to the market, so here, here are some of the uh actual examples that I would like to elaborate further. First, is in this the biggest area of China, a more large scale of a Chinese tourism example. Ah, is this the Guangxi Mountain? Guangxi is referring to the Suzhou city in Wuxi, a very famous Jiangxian city. So, this digital product. Our project is cool. It's called Listen to Guoshu. So Guoshu is a city uh, next to uh, Wuxi. So this project it is uh, about bringing a unique experience of the one of the Suzhou city uh, that flows with life. This is a flowing, with life. So this is a tour that is vivid and also bringing you immersive uh experience. So what are the visitors are listening? 他们听的就是
，嗯，苏州当地的文化科技的融合的一种完美的旅游时空的一种呈现。他们听的就是江南文化圣地所特有的、独特的一种体验的一个魅力的呈现。So through the headset, um, the visitors or the tourists, they are getting、uh, a sense of um、uh, Suzhou true hearing experiences, and uh the sound product that were produced were actually the integration of cultural content and the modification with the sound technology. 下面一张图，左边的就是深入姑苏的。宣传广告，右边这张图是游客们体验的线路。看这个箭头啊，从哪里进，从哪里出，都是有体验的线路的。And I've gathered here a promotional、uh, poster of the digital project, ah,、uh, for listen to Gu Su, and for tourists who are、uh, joining this, ah.、Uh, Uh, tour, they will be given with a map, as what we see here on the right, where it shows you the location and the spot where the listeners will be able to get、uh, a unique hearing experience、uh, from different、uh, different sites、uh, in the entire visiting area. 下一张，介绍一下这个项目的具体信息吧。它是每场观众啊，三十个人最多。呃，演出的时长呢，约一百分钟。晚上的七点，在苏州平江路的苏州的状元博物馆登记验票，领取耳机，戴上耳机啊，然后拿着伴手礼至厅堂休息。在七点十五分的时候，演出开始，跟着线路一直走啊，走到九点钟演出结束，归还耳机，全程啊四公里。So, if you are one of the tourists who are joining this tour, so these are the itinerary that you will be assigned with or given.、Uh, so,、uh, when you are joining this listen to Gu Su、uh, tour, then、um, this tour is accommodating up to thirty visitors per time, and you will be、uh, taking a total of one hundred minutes for the whole tour as a whole duration. So you will need to register starting from seven p.m. So you will go to the ticket checking at the Suzhou Scholar Museum, and you will be given with a headset and also a set of door gift, and then you can wait at the resting hall. And then at about seven fifteen p.m., the show will officially start, and you can enter、um, the tourist location, and the entire location will close at around nine p.m. So this is when the show will end. So throughout this tour, you will be able to walk、uh, and visit,、um, and also listening to the headset that you are wearing. So by the end of the tour, before nine p.m., you will be able to complete the whole journey, which is about four k.m. 下一页是关于它的呃日期、时间、地点和票价。And here are some of the uh in uh, tourist information, like for example, the ticket price, uh the performance time, and also the location and so on. This ticket price is Chinese yuan. So the ticket price is charging at Chinese yuan. Good. Second, also the last one, is the tourist tour. So the last project I would like to show with you here, it is the digital forbidden city. This is, we people go to Guangdong tour, ah, but we use its website and its app, can see about the features of Guangdong. Ah, these images are on the website of Guangdong and the app on the website of Guangdong. So,、uh, without going out, without actually traveling to Beijing at your home itself, you are able to get the most updated informations or、uh, the cultural 
uh, inspired product information through internet and also through your uh, mobile phones uh, apps. 下面一页也是数字故宫，呃，还有这个故宫的文创啊 ，cultural recreation 这个呃，它的这个一些图片展览啊。So these are some of the merchandise that are culturally inspired, uh, by um the tourism concepts. Ah,、uh, so these are the merchandise that are able to be purchased online, the cultural creations. From the Forbidden City. 上面有价格，呃，也是人民币，呃，价格对中国人来说都不是非常贵的。And each uh merchandise are uniquely designed, uh, with cultural uniqueness and features, and they are selling at a quite an affordable price in Chinese yuan as well. 右右边下面下面这张图啊，你看都是非常珍贵的珠宝啊，瓷器啊，呃。我们见到真品是很困难的，但是通过网站和 A P P 看到它们，而且还可以购买，还可以 shopping. And also the photo on the bottom here, ah,、uh, they are also featuring a series of premium products, ah,、uh, which are a high, ah,、uh, level of、uh, imitation of the actual, ah,、uh, antiques. So these are some of the um, um, merchandise, ah,、uh, that are. Very closely imitating the antiques from、uh, the cultural museum. 下面一页的两张图片也是故宫文创产品，都是非常有特色啊，具有中国文化特色的珠宝啊，呃，衣服啊，甚至还有女士喜欢的口红，叫数字故宫，叫故宫文创口红。And you see, the merchandise are not just resting at decoration items. You are also seeing some high-end products like、uh, premium、uh, jewelries and even some of the cosmetic products that are related to、um, the forty forbidden cities concepts. This is a very good example of a cultural, economic, and tourism combined. Cultural, economic, tourism combined. So through this kind of、um, online merchandise, this is also one of the representation of、um, integrating economy and culture together. From a social science, from a social science perspective, to look at, to analyze, this shows a kind of social entry. Chinese people, ah, social entry, a kind of life style, shows a kind of enjoyment. 中国已经中国人习惯了的、习得了的一个中国文化旅游消费的新常态。If we look at this phenomenon from a sociologist's perspective, so this is what we call a socially embedded lifestyle. So this is an acquired new norm for the Chinese people, and also a different cultural tourism consumer choice、uh, in the market. 最后，我们可以说一下结论啊。数字文旅是文化旅游产业转型升级，打造中国精彩省市、精彩城乡，进一步推动中国产业和经济高质量发展，增强中国人民幸福感、获得感和社会福祉进步的实现路径和重要抓手。当下之势，未来可期。At last, I would like to conclude with the following. The digital culture and tourism. It is an important tool to transform and upgrade the culture and the tourism industry. It is also essential to create a wonderful、uh, province and city experience and a wonderful creating wonderful cities and villages experience in China. And it is also to further promote the high quality development of China's industry and economy, and to enhance the happiness and a sense of gain. Uh, among the Chinese people, and also in the progress of getting social better social welfare. So I would like to say that the momentum of the present it is promising for the future. 最后，谢谢 ，Thank you very much， 辛苦了。And I would like to thank you for listening. Thank you all. 谢谢王博士。Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, back to you. Uh, thank you for Mr. Wang Tao.
Uh, this is a very interesting presentation. Uh, so we have a question uh, from Mr. Wahab. And the question is, is we have Lembana Rural Tourism join into Jadesta Rural Tourism Competition by Tourism Minister of Indonesia with Rural Tourism Competition. But we got 300 rural tourism. How to improve our rural tourism and how to become winner on the next competition? Our rural tourism apply 5A, that accessibility, accommodation, activity, attraction, and amenities. Uh, maybe for the interpreter, you can read on the chat. Okay. Uh one Na 然后可以在比赛中获胜这五个A是 Accessibility, Accommodation, Activity, Attraction and Amenities 就是可及性, 住宿, 活动, 景点和设施 可见呢,这个印尼也是非常重视这个乡村旅游的 so uh, from the question itself, and uh, first of all, thank you very much for the question. So from the question itself, I can sense that in, Indo uh, in Indonesia, uh, people are also placing high focuses on uh, tourism. So, so as um, the people here actually created a competition or a contest for rural tourism, right? Did I get it correctly? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, it is very uh, essential to be active in participating contests that are initiated by the government. In China, in the case of China, we have uh, more than 300 villages in China. We have a lot of villages in China as well. And same, equally in China, the competition among the villages are very intense. But regardless, um, we, we should participate regardless of the competitiveness level uh, where you are. Chong 香传统村落
官方的 government 的一个呃这个，所以我觉得呃必须参与获奖，这样就会得到这个政府的支持，政府的宣传，推荐很重要。In the case of China, like for example, in China we have a ministry uh, that is called the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. So under this ministry, they are uh, setting up uh, uh, re regularly uh, with state level and provincial level of scenery spots uh, as such to encourage uh, cities and towns and areas to actively Uh, joining or participating in this kind of government initi uh, initiated projects in order to win and also uh, be recognized and in order to promote the local sceneries. So even in past year, uh, from the state level, China are also selecting uh, important rural uh, accommodation uh, villages, like the rural accommodation or the rural hotels. To, to encourage more visitors to travel to the rural areas and to take accommodations there uh, instead of uh, our usual choice of hotel. And those rural accommodations are also accredited with a five-star accreditation, just like five-star hotels. But the most 这样你在获得竞赛的时候才有优势。最重要的是参加竞赛和政府的这些这个活动啊之外，最重要的还是自己要有特色，要有 idea， 要有想法。So the very essential point, if we are to trying to win a competition like a state level. A rural tourism competition. It is very important for the local people, the contestant, to know their unique feature of their local area. What are their unique feature, their unique selling point, and to position themselves around those uniqueness, uh, so as to make it different compared to other contestants. 我举个例子，在浙江省，中国的浙江省有个叫莫干山。那里的交通不是很发达，是山区。Nearby 很多 mountains 山，但是它距离上海啊、苏州啊、南京啊非常近，所以他就这他的先天条件和优势不是很好，但是他距离大城市比较近，啊，有了很多的客户需求。有需求，所以他就打造自己的优势和特色，就是这个民宿啊，就是搞了很多的乡村建筑、村舍啊，改造，打造成一个两个还是很多的，不是一个两个，是很多的，形成了叫民宿群，形成了民宿群落。呃，而且是按照五星级的标准，不是当地人建的。都是外来的，上海的、南京的、苏州的，他们来买这块地，买这个房子二十年的产产权，买下来之后建，然后投资，然后按照最高的标准，对吧？呃，来建设，所以就是当地人吸引大城市更多的资金和资源来，啊，招商引资嘛，等于是啊，呃，这种资本的。输入通过外力资本的外力资源的输入和嵌入，来形成自己的这个民宿群，这就是他自己的特色特点。这个模式，这个 model model model、yeah.。So I would like to give you one actual example here to uh for for our reference. So this example actually it is in Zhejiang in a mountain called Mo Gan Shan, the Mo Gan Mountains. So this is a mountainy area that which is very inconvenient to to travel into. It is not closely connected uh, to the highways, uh, but it is uh, next to um, the big cities such as uh, Shanghai and Suzhou and Nanjing. Those are the big cities in in China. So this Mo Mo Gan Mountain is actually. Uh, adjacent 
to these three big cities in China. So the people in these rural area, the way how they transform their village is that they are turning um, their rural buildings into five-star home state accommodations uh, so as to attract um, those um, citizens in the big cities to unplug and willing to travel into the mountain areas to stay in those high-end uh, rural, uh, rural farm turned homestays to enjoy uh, a unique mountain, mountainy uh, sceneries uh, as their site vocation. So this is one of the successful experience of how a rural area can attract citizen tourists uh, into a deserted uh, uh, site. And also this uh, village is also attracting a lot of fundings uh, from the big cities and in order to sustain it um, for a, a very long time. Mm. So we call it the Morgan, the, the mountain of Morgan business model. Yeah, so uh, Shanghai the Yoke, Suzhou the Yoke, Hangzhou the Yoke, Nanjin the Yoke, Yingi Tatsi Hung Hama, Dua, Raho, Chen Sidi Mayo Zhe, Chen Sidi the Tatan Sidi Ren Shuao Zhe, Mantu the Tatan Sidi Shuao, so he Tatan Tayo the Turso, Chako Hung Gawa. 你知道吗？一个房间一个晚上要两千块钱人民币，但是上海人、南京人、杭州人，啊，no problem 有钱 money OK 是吧？你有特色，所以来了，来了之后，告诉自己的 friends 朋友啊，是吧？更多的游客就来了，所以它就会改变当地的交通，就是这个他们说的第一个叫可及性嘛，是吧？自然就会改变它的可及性。都是开着自驾车来的吗？那就大家来的人多了，那不就当地政府要修路吗？那有钱的地方，大城市人也要来修路吗？是吧？第一个，first，first就是这个可及性。那么住宿条件也会改善，也会自然有很多活动，为这些
and better transportation leading into this area. So this become a successful tourist uh, case in China. 最后呢，就说啊，呃，当地的特色这很重要，但是别的村也会有当地的特特色发展成一种model。这样的话，你就跟别人、别的村、别的乡村就就不一样了。人无我有，人有我今嘛，是吧？这样你形成了不光有当地